The 2022 Noble CrossFit Games officially underway here in Madison, Wisconsin. Event number one in the books on the individual side. Let's turn it over to the team competition. Back out here at North Park with our, resi our resident Aussie, Jeremy Austin. Tanya Wagner, the 2009 CrossFit Games champion. Jamie Hagia is our reporter on the field. My name is Joel Godet. Glad to have you all along with us here for the first of a week of competition at the Noble CrossFit Games. Event number one here for the teams. Similar, has some similar aspects to what the individuals went through, and it starts with the bike. First time we've ever seen that in the team competition. First time on the team side getting to ride these bikes. What this event looks like is it's going to start and end with a team pushing Bob, a familiar element. And then in between, they're going to have three rounds of male-female pairs that each pair will complete the following. A mild bike ride while the other male-female pair is going to be pushing the bob and then doing 30 synchronized toes to bar. They'll flip-flop, the other team will ride, the other pair will ride the bike, the other will push the bob and synchro toe to bar. They, that is one round, they will each do that three times. All right, Jeremy, how do we cook this thing up? Uh, it is going to be one cracking event to start things off for competition here, and I think that synchronization is going to be one thing, not just with the two people doing the soda bar, but also the, trying to synchronize your time with the people doing the bike as well. How do you synchronize that? So that swap is going to be really important. And selecting the correct pairs, how do you start things out to competition? Do you send your fastest and strongest first? Do you send them last? What is fatigue going to play a factor in this a long 40 minute event? All right, let's talk about the bikes themselves. Introduce you to the fourth member of our crew. How you doing, Jimmy Hickey? Thanks, Joel. I'm here with Dean Gore, the VP of Global Marketing for Trek Bicycle. Whoa. Dean, can you tell us a little bit more about these bicycles we're seeing these athletes ride? This is uh, our FX model, which is a, a fitness bike. It's the bike that does everything really well. It's like the perfect thing for a CrossFit athlete that wants to get outside of the box once in a while and spend some time outdoors. It goes gravel, it does grass, it does uh, pavement really well. So it's, it's the perfect bike if you want to just start your cycling. Thank you so much, Dean. Thank you. Jamie, thank you. Dean, thank you as well. As we take a look at the lane assignments here in Heat 1 of this field of 36 teams. Eighth day CrossFit back from last year. The exact same team roster for the team from Michigan. Move fast, lift heavy qualifying this year. Remember, DQ'd out of semifinals last year. Great for Will Carter and Christian Harris to have the opportunity to earn their way back here. Rhapsody CrossFit is back from last season's CrossFit Games. CrossFit Mayhem Justice, one of the three CrossFit Mayhem teams out of Cookville. And we are underway. We're gonna push the Bob down the field and get things started. Again, this starts with the Team Bob push. It's at that point that the teams will then split. Two athletes will go out on the one mile course of a bike ride. The other two athletes will head to the Zeus ring. The teams got a chance to test out the bike path yesterday so they could make their decisions based on that pairing like Jeremy spoke about earlier. Who are you gonna send out right now? Because we have four people on your team. If you have one athlete that's fantastic on the bike, you have to wait for your other athletes. So it's really important that you pair them well with their abilities on this bike. Plenty of people coming out with their bikes. It's really important to get a good start and get out in front, even if you do have to split your pairs up on this first mile. Really important to get out in front. Plenty in that pack behind, but a few athletes getting a good lead nice and early. And it's a big pack, and it's only one lap. So different than what we saw on the individual side, where you can space yourselves out a little bit, and you've got some time to ride. It's more of a sprint out here, and you've got to navigate that morass. But remember, they have no idea the speed that the other two teammates are pushing the bob and doing their synchronized toes to bar. So for this one, especially here in the first round, this is all about just going out and not being the pair that you're holding up your other team. You want to get there and time it, but you're you're doing this blind, not knowing what your other pair is doing. A lot of the team members using the front section of the bob and very heavy as well, 667 pounds or 302 kilos for the conversion. And this is a lot slower than we've seen the four person as we expect and they're allowed to push that bob in whatever capacity they want but this is 
proven. We've seen last year with the two uh, pairs that are push or two athletes pushing the bob, choosing the front. It's a lot on the legs. So in comparison to what the individuals just did, there was a lot of pulling and upper body. This is a lot of leg fatigue. So there could be some of that factor going into the bike. It could be a fact of getting out on the bike for a little bit of a rest to flush these legs out because they are working very hard. This proving to be very difficult and probably a lot slower than I was expecting. This is Mayhem Justice. Many of these teams do not have a bob. If you're going to train for an apparatus like this, it's a lot of individual sled work. Mayhem does have a bob. Rich Froning, of course, the captain of Mayhem Freedom, he went out and got one. They found kind of a jerry-rigged bob that they bought from Minnesota, brought it on down to Cookville, Tennessee. So they don't necessarily have that rogue bob, but they've got something to train with where a lot of the other teams in this field maybe don't. We expected to talk about Mayhem, uh, you know, independence and freedom, but Mayhem just is squeaking in out of the semifinals, their third team making history, the first affiliate to send, to qualify and send three teams to the CrossFit Games. So this is super just exciting for their whole affiliate as a whole. The bike lap, we've done some average times on what the individual's done for males and females, and the women are coming in at around three and a half minutes, and the men just over over three minutes. This gravel part, very difficult as well, going from the path to grass to gravel, back to path again, and that time, we're getting around that three minute point now after the first bar push as the first athletes start their toe to bar. And this is where they're gonna be able to make the adjustment and realize, all right, do we have a little more luxury on, on the bike, on that mile, and I take, we can take it a little more cautious, or how fast do we kinda of need to push? Depending on which pair is waiting, I expect to see a lot of communication here on the first transition as we see the first team waiting. That's 2150 out of Nordhaven, Denmark, stands literally for North Harbor in Copenhagen. Frederick Studa is on the left, their lead male and the team's captain. Now you have that opportunity to have those legs get a little bit of the juices flowing again before you hop on the bike. Athletes required to walk the bikes in at a certain point just outside of North Park for safety obvious reasons coming in with so many people. But as you mentioned, Joel, those legs, they are probably have to going to be really flushed out at this point in time because this event is going to be very long and just the start, the first half of the first round. AB CrossFit. That's one of the more international teams. They hail from North Miami Beach, Florida, but made up of athletes from three separate countries, including Maria Quintero, former Colombian national champion, and Laura Sanchez, former Venezuelan national champion. Kind of a dark horse team in that regard. Some of the best of their countries. They paused there, took a little breather, so if you can keep that bob like a sled moving, that is going to be the, the best that you can do. Get that, get yourself continuing that, that push, but when you need to break, that's where you can look around and see if you can make up some ground. Five and a half minutes in here as we take another look airily at the bike course out there. And a thank you goes to Trek Bicycles for providing the bikes and helmets that the athletes are using today. Visit trekbikes.com. Check out road, mountain, electric, or fitness bikes, including the bikes that these athletes are riding here today. First part of the course, probably the easiest part of the course with the concrete path going through the campground, and that's when things start to get a little bit dicey and the gravel. Joel, you did go for a walk around the track yesterday, and a couple of those parts of that track get a little bit dicey up the back section. It's actually interesting going in this direction, though, because I walked it in the reverse direction. There's a part that is downhill on grass, that when you go the other way, is obviously uphill on grass toward the back side. Keep in mind, though, it did rain a little bit ago, so maybe a little bit slick as you come down. It's going to be in about 30 seconds from what we're viewing right here. And I love that for the team side, getting a chance to ride these bikes. We've seen the bike element when we saw cyclocross back in 2017 for the individuals. And it was a really cool off-road course to get to do. And this event could be so different if we had the Echo Bikes out there and they were doing just one big effort on the bike and then, you know, easily could have been a very team element to do that, but I love this fact. What do you make of what we just saw on the left side of screen, athletes switching side of the bob as they took a break there? 
I'm not actually sure. Your legs are going to be burning a lot more than your upper body anyway, so you're going to be taking alternate steps with the bob. So fatigue is going to be building up anyway, so I'm not sure. And maybe it's just that little bit of more of a break. Here's the other thing to think about. When you have athletes with such a disparity in weight and height, one, even though if the male athlete is trying to not even push a little less, sometimes there's just a torque more on one hip or one leg, and so if you just need to get that that drive out of the other side. It's a possibility. Oslo Purple Red has taken the lead right now here in the first tee. One of two teams, you talk about three teams coming from Mayhem. Oslo has put two teams in this competition. Doesn't happen a whole lot. Invictus has done it, Oslo has done it. Wasatch has done it, or CrossFit Ute rather, has done it back in the early 2000s. That's Will Carter from Move Fast, Lived Heavy, former Ithaca Bomber football player coming across and the fittest educator in the world coming out of the occupational games. Asked him what his students thought of that. He said they thought it was pretty cool, but I think they just think I'm a huge power lifter for him to get the opportunity and come out and show off his overall fitness. Pretty great opportunity here in Madison. It's hard to explain CrossFit to anyone, yet alone a classroom of kids. Um, but you know Speaking what? Speaking from experience? <laughs> yes, they don't know. No, but uh, you know, and again, this is why that bike element, I love that they're getting CrossFit trained for life to be able to functional fitness right here, get out on a bike, go for a bike ride in different terrain. I was going to mention earlier about pushing the big bob. I don't think there's anything that can replicate when you run out of uh, fuel, that you've got to push your car. There it is. That's the same sort of thing we can reflect on and anyone can jump that, on a bike. Is that from experience? Yes, that is. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Oslo Purple Red continues to lead the way here. Hakon Lechnis, Henrik Negard, Ragnild Sam and Marion Johnson. The foursome that is the quote-unquote other team from Oslo. Of course, Oslo Navy Blue came in second overall at the games last year. I'm not sure that I'd be opening the front car doors to be pushing it from that section. I'd be from right behind. So interesting that every team has decided to push from the front, maybe just to get that little bit of a lift for the bob. Rain coming in the background with that cloud cover getting a little bit darker. Will the rain on the grass prove to be a little bit easier and the bob might slide a little bit better? It's Ragnold same on the right side of the screen. Henrik Nagar on the left side of the screen. Both new to the team this season. Jeremy, I think it comes down to the steering and just making sure that you can allow. I wondered if we were going to see that. I wondered if with the helmet we were going to see anybody drive and how they were, if they would push any different. But is his head under using it more of a shoulder, more contact on that bob. Now that is Henrik Nagard on the left of screen. He is on the national team, and that's one of the interesting side plots to why Norway is so good. And the country of Norway has four teams at these CrossFit games. There is a nationally funded functional fitness program in that country. Nagard is on the national team. So he is the number one athlete on this purple red team. He's their driving force. A lot of experience there with all the little stuff that matters. Chalk up those hands here before we grab the bob again. And he goes right back to that neck underneath. These athletes driving this bob up and down the field of play before they head back to the rig. It's a toes to bar, bob push, couplet here while their partners are out on the one mile bike course, then they'll switch again. Fatigue really starting to kick in for a number of these teams on the second round of the bob, which can mean that if they're communicating well enough with the other pairing going out on the bike course, they can tell them to slow down a little bit more. And we probably will see our fastest round in that first round and things getting a little bit slower with the more fatigue that builds up over the course of this event. This is a 40 minute time capped event. We're 11 minutes and 21 seconds in and CrossFit 2150 has now retaken the lead here. Eighth day, the same four athletes that competed at these games last season is in second, move fast, lift heavy. We showed you Will Carter earlier. Team out of New York is in third. That's back to 2150. Out of Nordhaven, Denmark. 
qualified fifth place out of the Lowlands Throwdown, and then actually did an out-of-season competition in June. So they are well-tested, on the same page, and ready to throw down here in Madison. The team side of competition is, it's, a, it's an amazing opportunity to represent your affiliate, to represent what else goes on at a CrossFit affiliate. It's, we think it's just working out, but the community side of things is what people say keeps them there as well and how connected you are. And I love that from the team competition, then when you get to see uh, just teams that are really cohesive, that working together when you can see them as a rookie team like this, doing those, uh, those competitions, living life together, and then getting to showcase it when you come out here um, in the greatest test of fitness here for the teams. It's really cool to see those teams that just jive together. And we've been running our affiliates for so long. We make a point of doing every Saturday morning workout as a team of two or three or four people just to bring the community together even more, even though CrossFit, as you see, as a sport, is a very individual event, but this is a great way to showcase what they can do together. And what a demanding first event of the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games for the teams, a 40-minute time cap for this event. It's one of the longer events through this full test Throughout the whole week, we are we do expect to see obviously variants, all different uh, time durations, weight, heavy, light, all different capacity. But this is quite a way to get started. This is one of our longest events we ever have ever had for the team competition, and the transition now, and a little bit of a chat going on in between all four team members. So maybe just slow the pace of the bike down, and the pace slowed considerably from the first mile bike ride for the first pairing. Three times out here on the course, back to the push of the bob. Again, down and back before you return to the rig for the toes to bar. And again, the switching of sides. Joel, I think that might be one of the strategies teams are going to incorporate just to make sure they're not resting too long. It's just a quick switch over. It's probably going to be about five seconds in between efforts on the bob. As I mentioned earlier, 667 pounds or 302 and a half kilos. And the four team member push to start things off in event number one looked quite easy. Add some fatigue and add or subtract two team members from it. We're looking at a lot more work and a lot more effort. Continues to be Oslo purple red in front there. And the camouflage color left of screen turning that bob around. We saw Negard earlier literally put his neck on the bottom of the bob. This is Hakon Lekis on the right. And probably another the switch. Uh, another thing you've got to keep in mind, you've got to keep that bob inside the lane. Yes. And if you've got one stronger athlete on one side, you're going to get that imbalance. So maybe that switch is going to assist in keeping that bob nice and straight and in your own lane. They do say, stay in your own lane, don't they? <laughs> Lechner's working with Marion Johnson. If you're wondering, what does purple red mean, by the way? Marion Johnson wanted to come up with a team name for the second Oslo bunch that meant something. The guys on the team played a trick on her. They said, purple red's not a color, it means nothing. We'll go with that. <laughs> that is how purple red became the name of the second Oslo team. Their first team is Oslo Navy Blue. We'll see them in heat two. And look at how quickly now the switches are happening. And I think part of that, Jeremy, is to your point, you've got to keep the bob in your lane. But that's now two or three switches in maybe the last 20 feet here for purple red. It seems to be working for them, and they've got a slight lead. And it actually looks like Marion Johnson is pushing stronger at this point. Very much so is the case. She's leaning a little bit more on the outside, which is kind of pushing it in, I think, to avoid it from turning the other direction. But you have to be able to communicate that. So purple red. Back to the Zeus rig here for those toes to bar. And legs are going to get very heavy if you're going to be utilizing them for this cycle one mile lap around the North Park and the big bot push. You come into 30 synchronized 
Toda Bar and going through three sets of 30. Big effort. Those legs are going to get heavy. Even more demand on that core. It's core, it's leg, it's also grip. You can just tell the way that Marion Johnson was shaking out her arms coming down from the rig. Well, it's a lot of arms, Joel, on the bar. You're holding your, your arms up. There's just a lot of fatigue, there's a lot of demand in your upper body as well. Because you have to stay tight, and so it's a lot of time under tension when you have that bob and you're pushing like that. That's where when you can get it across your shoulders and across your traps and use more of your body than your arms, that is an advantage. Take a look at Hot Bone Lickness on the left there from Purple Red. Former triathlete, this is in his wheelhouse as an opening event. And now you've got the rest of the field with their bikes arriving here. Yeah, as this one is really taken off, it really is becoming more apparent that how important the bob portion of this event is. The bikers are just pulling in, and if you can get your bike staged, if you can get that transition smooth like that, that's exactly what you want to do. Athletes probably going to drop the gears to make it a little bit easier to cycle those legs so there's less demand as they go around this course. Fairly flat, as you mentioned, Joel, until we get to that back section. You hit that little bit of a hill and then it's all downhill all the way through to North Park before they get off. And the legs are probably going to suffer a lot more the higher that gear is. Ragnold, Sam, let's take a look real quick at the bike path here. Now look, so you can see those two buoys. Cost yourself a couple of seconds there. You've got to go between the targets and stay on course. That's a little bit of body awareness here as we go. And you know, they say you run 100 yard sprints in American football. Sometimes if you're not on track, you run 120 yard sprints. That's what just happened. We saw Ragnall same though, had to be coming to the Bob going, what did the other pair just do? Because she's looking over at Hendrik Nagard and saying, I, I think we got to move this over a little bit. 667 pounds for an unloaded Bob. You can add weight, you can see just inside of the handles. And like you said, Joel, if you're not training with an apparatus like this, it is much different than the typical Prowler push. It's much different just with that amount of weight and needing to push with a pair. It's a fantastic test to incorporate in the team side. And if you haven't used one of these bobs before, the Prowler push, as you mentioned, it's a little bit lower to the ground, so you can get a little bit lower with your body height. With this, you've got to actually adjust what works best for you and this various positions on the bob you can use and that's a great replication of the two different positions. One of two different positions you can use. 667 pounds if you're trying to wrap your head around that at home. That's like trying to push a vending machine down this field. Or if you want a little bit of a different point of reference, five kegs. Is that upright or is that on its side? <laughs> I think it weighs the same, both directions, Jeremy. <laughs> You can see the wear and tear starting to set in on these teams pushing the bob. We are more than halfway through this time cap. Which for your leading teams at this juncture should not be an issue. A lot of communication going on just like there is in any team event. And that's really it. There will be the leg implosion feeling of what happens with this bob, but you need to manage that fatigue and just get to that red line a little bit and then back off. I'm excited to see if we have anything. I, I love ending the event with a final bob push by the entire team. It will be um, a nice element if we get to see a little race there, a little sprint, bob sprint to the finish. How light is that bob going to feel when the entire team is pushing at the very end when you've just gone for basically a half an hour working with only two? It's obviously not going to be as fast as the first one with that accumulation of fatigue over the previous 30 minutes. So I'm actually excited if we do get a race down the, the North Park field. And who has got more in the tank? And this continues to be Oslo Purple Red. 
Qualified to the CrossFit Games, fourth out of the Lowlands throwdown. Thought they could make a semifinal. That was the goal originally. Then in the quarters, finished pretty good and say, all right, we've exceeded expectations. Let's roll. Joe, I'll have to say that the pacing from the bike has got a lot better as teams have got more comfortable with how long the bob is actually taking and the synchronized toe to bar. And a little bit more recovery out on the bike as well, adjusting pedals for your teammate, like crucial for transitions. All of the little stuff there, Mayhem Justice leaving the bike on the ground, but we're seeing here, setting your bike up so as soon as your, your other pair is ready, they can jump right on and everything is ready. That is the little things that make a big difference in the end when it comes to any of these team events. It's all the one percenters, all the little things that we probably, the better teams have thought of and the rookies coming into team competition haven't thought of and we see that in individual com individual competition as well but even it, it's just magnified that much more on a team side and that's where the second year of competition of being with a team usually those are the things you tighten up and you realize that is where you make up all the ground i'm also anxious to see we have another heat to go and watching the speed change of all this i'm anxious to see how they uh, how it looks maybe possibly different because these guys came out hard i mean it's the first event of the games, you've been training for a year. You've been training for years to get here. It's hard to hold back, but I do wonder about that first sprint. Like you said, Jeremy, down the field, they blistered themselves right down the field and they took off. I, I wonder if we'll see a little different start. This is the final round real quick here, guys. Last bob push for the pairs, last synchro toes to bar. And if you're on the bike, it is the last bike ride. You've got eighth day CrossFit on the left, Captain Michael Poss on the left, and Zoe Jones just on the inside as well. With 8th Day CrossFit, they were last year rookie team. They took 14th, they had four top 10 finishes, and two of them included the Bob, where they had two people push. So this is something that they were comfortable with last year. I can only imagine they're, they are more comfortable or they're just the same confidence there with that move. So I'm not surprised to see them here. You got a football player from Hope College on the left there, Michael Poss, low man wins. Get underneath that Bob drive. And often we talk about the, the affiliates that are here in their second consecutive year, fourth year here, all that, but not many come back with the exact same teams. And this is one of them. Eighth day CrossFit Black. And when you have the same, the confidence, you come back with your same team, that same energy training, that this is fun. Well, they say combination and working together and the accumulation of that time together is imperative for team sports. This is as close to team sport as you're going to get with CrossFit and just that time spent together, it's experience and you just can't really do without that when you're coming into an important competition like this. The cohesiveness of the team, the unity of working together, it is, it, it is bringing that all together, knowing the nerves even of last year when you're a rookie team, just getting that out of the way. We've been there, we deserve, it wasn't a fluke, we're back. And the team's watching, sitting back in heat number two and trying to probably time how long a round is going to take and what they're gonna do with strategy. Now, does the strategy change after seeing how hard that two-person bob push up and down the field is. I think the fact of just knowing how long this event is, you, you just pick a different pace for portions of it of where you're going to push and what, and what you're going to do. And your better teams will know early on we're not going to see the, we're, we're going to see, they're going to save a little bit for the end. Cycle rate as well on the bike going round as the later rounds come about. Do you maybe set a higher gear so you're doing less revolutions of the bike as you go around to lessen the fatigue, even though you've got to push a little bit harder each time? Or do you go a light, uh, uh, sorry, uh, easier gear change and just to get more revolutions, flush those legs out a little bit more? Well, and that's, that's a smart step. If you are proficient on the bike, you'll do that. It's not an echo bike that you're sitting there with the same level, <laughs> the same degree where you can be mindless and just do that. You can get a little, you can use that to your advantage if you're comfortable with it. But if you want to make the comparison to what you might do when you're affiliated at home, it would be like riding the C2 bike, right? So how are you going to play with those fan settings is going to be similar to how these athletes will play with the gears. Zero for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Athletes coming back in here from their final bike ride. Waiting for the athletes to finish either their bob push or their toast to bar, or both at this juncture. And then it will be the team bob push back to the finish. Keep an eye on the clock here, 40 minute time cap. This heat will set the time to beat for the remaining teams as you get another look at eighth day with Michael Poss and Zoe Jones. His wife Heather Poss and Ryan Schaefer are the other pair that just came back in off the bikes. I'll be interested to see if any teams come in off that last bike and they've got a little bit more time. Are they going to get off their legs before they get into the last push? Always make time for the fist bumps though. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Team came together, Michael and Heather fist pumped each other and now look at 8th day CrossFit. Coming from behind, 8th day Black is in an absolute race for it. Oslo Purple Red led the entire way and there is no room to stop, no room to breathe. Eighth day CrossFit's lead growing down the back stretch. It's the team from Michigan that sets the early tone here at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. 28.02 unofficially is the time to beat in Heat 1. Well played. Well played. That's what we're hoping to see. A little sprint to the finish. They're definitely resting their legs now. And the burn. That lactic acid buildup over the last 30 minutes has taken its toll. Eight second difference. Here comes CrossFit Tyrannis. Team that came here to earn it today to make their names known, qualified for the CrossFit Games back in 2020. They won the Brazilian CrossFit Championship that year as a sanctional. Obviously, those games never wound up happening on the team's side because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Put some respect on that Tyrannus name. They're coming in here with what would be a third place finish here in Heat 1 of Event 1. Going to be about a minute behind Oslo Purple Red. That's your top three in Heat 1. We still have 11 minutes left to go in the time cap. Zoe Jones is alive. Good communication by 2150. Danes have to straighten that thing out here. Good job up front to push. And after the solid reset, 21.50. Team Norse BL is done. And look at whatever is left in those legs. They left some engine, some gas in the tank. Twenty-one fifty is done. Rhapsody finishes in fifth. Great bounce back for Rhapsody, who came in last last season in their rookie debut. A lot learned by their two returning women. That eighth day team winning the heat. Comp train team. Actually on site with their coaches, with Jared Smith and Ben Bergeron in attendance, of course, this weekend. Some flat feet pushing and some toe pushing as well. A couple of different strategies to try and get off those quads as best you can. Is it strategy at this point or is it whatever hurts less? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. A lot of it just hurts. <laughs> And you can see the damage of what will be, you have to imagine, one of the longest, if not the longest events that these teams are tested with. Milford Conquer, their first appearance here since 2017. They were second in 2015. Now, obviously, different makeup of the team, but that's an affiliate that knows how to throw down here. There is Milford driving to the finish in what will be just under... 31-30 for a team that qualified fourth out of the Atlas Games. Got to stay in your lane there. 
And don't stop pushing yeah. when you're actually your teammates are still going. Greater Heights Ascend finishes the Texas team. A little bit of a super team. That's Jordan Cook's roster. And that is riding the line to come across the finish here for 80-20. Get those shoes out of the way. <laughs> Pushing past them. And the team from Portadown, Northern Ireland, has finished. That's Lewis Pearson on the ground. Jim Neal is their other guy. Quick shout out, by the way, to his wife, Sophie, watching back home in Ireland. She just gave birth a couple days ago. New father, Jim, competing in his first CrossFit Games. Now that's a lead pass if I've ever heard one. <laughs> That's oak. I, I, I thought, thought the judge was taking your shoes off. Worried about the That's timer. full service That's right there. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen anyone come over the finish line yet and enjoy this moment. Look at the devastation here. Just look at this. I love that this is the first event of the test of the CrossFit Games here for the teams. They are getting a dose straight out of the gates. It's a long day today for them, and this one I think they're going to be feeling for a little bit. Good test. Oh, I think, I think all of them are going to be jumping in the ice bath straight it's after a this. One. And yet there's still enough energy to throw 700 pounds of a bob around between these foursomes down at the end. Listen, these are the professionals. This is what they train for. This is why they're here. But it's not that it doesn't hurt. It's, it still <laughs> hurts. <laughs> CrossFit Kilo 2 driving to the finish. But... As we've seen, anyone of any real capability can do something like this. So you can scale everything back at your affiliate, drop the weight, drop the distance, and anyone can push anything. It's just like a heavy shopping cart, I suppose, around the, the supermarket. Infinitely scalable, but here, even at the games, you see, I mean, like, you're still pushing, though, in within your limits and within your capacity. And it still hurts. It, it, it hurts the same. They just, they're used to that. Just the empathy factor. Just one team left out competing at the moment. Oh, excuse me. Three teams left out there competing at the moment. There's Mayhem Justice. Seth Stovall's on the right side pushing. Famous because he moved to Cookville, Tennessee from California and literally lived in his van for quite some time. But now they were the ones we saw earlier who had those little, the little details of leaving the bike, not setting things up. So they are a rookie team, a lot of new athletes in here. I mean, they're training with the best, with Rich Froning and team members at, in Cookville. But there's still, there's a lot to learn and they will learn so much from this experience, just like any other rookie team. These are all the things that you go back and train back home with once you're here, these these little pieces. Aniston Suthoff just switched to come into the front of screen with Seth behind. They're also young. They are the youngest team in this field, and it's by a lot. Average age 23 for this Mayhem Justice crew. Selwyn, team from New Zealand, is second youngest at an average age of 25. Just showed you a quick glimpse of Toluca, team that qualified out of Copa Sur. And here is Toluca pushing across the finish. The team that was fifth out of Copa, sir. Got their call late in the game. Got all their visas, their travel in order, and able to compete here at the CrossFit Games. The bikers are waiting here for Mayhem. Jessica Collation, Ben Davidson. Now you've got to finish pushing the bob, then do the 30 synchro toes to bar. That still awaits here for Sudhoff and Stovall. Four minutes to the cap. Next team, number six. Aniston, just 19 years of age, Seth officially competed in his first Open this year. When you hear that, that's yeah, it's unbelievable. What do you think? How, I mean, like, how new they are? Or how, yes, but still just that they are so young, not the experience. But having a taste of this yes. when you are that young yes. to just, not just to young in age, but young to the sport. 
CrossFit Trondheim finishes one of the four Norwegian teams. And they assume the position that every other team has assumed getting over the finish line. The, the chalk line position? <laughs> That's the one. Three minutes left to go here in the time cap opening heat. Time to beat 28.02 by eighth day CrossFit. Top of screen. You know, it's funny when you associate the word underdog with mayhem, but we talked to Jessica Kalasian ahead of time. She said, hey, we're kind of the underdog team. Like, we are the more so true affiliate team at Mayhem, as opposed to what people might dub a, a super team. You know, Jessica Kalasian moved from Alabama, and obviously Seth moved from California, but it's the younger group that is gaining the experience. They were the ones not expected to be here. They were yes. training with developing their team, their strength, their depth, but they they weren't expected to be here when you looked at who their competitors were, the semifinal and syndicate crown. So it, it, just the fact of being here, yes, their affiliate is thrilled and they're and they're here. They're, they're getting through all these parts, the first event. Um, it's a long week. There's going to be a lot that goes on here. There's a lot of different tests. They'll excel at the ones they can. Final 30 toes to bar synchronized are done. On to the four person bomb push to the finish here for Mayhem Justice. Ben Davidson right. Seth Stovall's back up front on left. As you mentioned, the two boys up front, Ben getting those feet planted as much as possible, but set up on those toes and getting that cycle rate as quick as he can. Ben's had a lot more time to recover. And they'll get in behind, uh, ahead of the cap. Well ahead of the cap. A minute and 15 seconds ahead of the cap. Everyone finishes here in heat one. Mayhem justice is done. And we're halfway through event number one. And a smart move for them there, taking their fresher athletes with the fresh legs, staggering them to the opposite diagonal position. So, yeah, great way to finish there with a, a smart move, but glad to see them, like we said, Mayhem making history with the third team here. Get to see them there at the end. We'll see more of them. A lot of different strategies incorporated. I think a, whole, a few of them may have changed on the fly once they knew exactly what sort of fatigue they were up against. And the bike may have been the new element for this event, but it really came down to the bob. It was how efficient you were at pushing this bob. Oslo Red had some struggle with that, but it was eighth day CrossFit, second consecutive year with the exact same team members. They were very, they did a great job with the two man push last year, proved again this year to do the same. And that's really what got them this win. Fist bumps heading to the final bob push and the cycle rate of those legs from all four team members. A little bit slower from Oslo, but eighth day, enough in the tank to get him home. And I don't know how he's still standing. They came from behind, it's Zoe, Heather, Michael, and Ryan, eighth day, down with Jamie Hagia. All right, I am here with Eight Day CrossFit. You guys had an amazing finish at the end. You guys came up behind, but were able to push past. What was going through your mind, and what were you telling your team to finish? Uh, we kept telling each other going into the event that it was going to be won or lost in the third round, not the first round. So we were mentally ready and conserved our effort to the end so we could have a final push there. With such short notice of the announcement of the workout, how did you decide on pairing who was gonna go first on the bike and who was gonna go on the bob push and the toes to bar? Um, so they're a married couple, but for some reason I always go with his wife. So uh, we knew that was gonna be the pairing, her and I, and then these two, because they're a little faster on toes to bar than we are. But um, yeah, that's kind of game plan as it always been. As a married couple, we see your son over here. What does that mean to you to have him watching you two compete out here? It's really cool to have him watching us. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's definitely, it adds something to it for us that he can see us do it and see what can happen if you work hard and have a goal and chase it. So, um, yeah. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Maverick and Phoenix, by the way, the sons of the Paz, Michael and Heather there, they come away with the win in 2802 in heat number one. Oslo Purple Red. Led most of the way, finished eight seconds back, then Tyrannus in third. Full official results online at games.
www.crossfit.com. We do have Heat 2 coming up when we've got weather in the area. Games.crossfit.com, full official results, standings, and more. Stay with us here on day one of the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Blame it on the rain. Back at it a little bit later than we expected here for the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games, the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. Wasn't really the rain. It was more so the thunder and lightning in the area. Fans having to clear out here in Wisconsin, but they are now filing back into the Alliant Energy Center. And for maybe the greatest delay in CrossFit Games history between heats of an individual event, we will conclude event one on the team side. Jamie Hagia is our reporter in the field alongside the 2009 CrossFit Games champion, Tanya Wagner, Jeremy Austin. My name is Joel Godet. Event one. We're gonna bike, we're gonna bob, we're gonna tote a ball. That's why it's called Biker Bob. The athletes are gonna come in and they're gonna push that bob down the field and then they're gonna split off into male-female pairs. One pair is gonna go out on the bike for a one mile road bike, or I'm sorry, one mile bike ride around the course while the other pair is gonna stay on the field, push Bob down and back the field and then complete 30 synchronized toes to bar. The pairs will flip flop and do the opposite movement. They'll each go through each part of this event three times. Recipe for success, Jeremy. Absolutely, timing on this is absolutely essential. We found that out in heat number one and making sure the stuff you do on the bike out on the mile course is exactly in line with what the Bob is doing and the synchronized total bars and selecting your correct pairs and making sure you've got adequate positioning on the Toyota bar and also getting that Bob back in time for the swap back onto the bike. We had a two hour weather delay. What do you do for those two hours? Down to Jamie Hagia. Jamie, thank you. As we take a look at the weather, 71 degrees. It's nice. The humidity, not so nice. There are some more thunderstorms in the area until about mid-afternoon today here in Wisconsin. But the impact, and you can see some of the puddling on that bike course out behind the Alliant Energy Center. Lane assignments here for the second half of the teams. CrossFit Mayhem Freedom, the defending champions. Reigning, defending, undisputed in lane nine. CrossFit Oslo Navy Blue in lane six finished second to Rich Froning's Mayhem Freedom team on the podium at the 2021 Noble CrossFit Games. CrossFit Invictus, the only affiliate that has had a team at the games every year since there has been a team competition. CrossFit Mayhem Freedom, 279 point win last year, biggest in history. They like to uh, just make history. Rich Froning is looking to get his 10th CrossFit Games champion. He has four as an individual, five on the team side of things, looking for his 10th championship this year. Most dominant performance ever, and Mayhem maybe got better this season with the additional Samuel Cournoyer. They are the unstoppable force, the immovable object, though. That may very well be Iceland Annie and her team from CrossFit Reykjavik. Absolutely, Joel. And the token Aussie that we have got, Khan Porter, in that team. So they've got a whole country behind that team as well, as long as our other two teams from Australia competing. But Lauren Fisher, that's going to be the interesting one. Annie mentioned that that shoulder injury has caused her a few dramas of late. I think that the shoulder in this event in particular is going to be fairly protected with the Bob push, as well as that extension on the Toto Bar. There's not going to be too much pressure on that. You can see these teams pushing the Bob here, splitting off into their pairs. It is down and back on the bob and then the 30 synchronized toes to bar while your other two partners are out riding the bike. You'll then flip, do the same thing. That constitutes one round. And you can see Lauren Fisher there on the right side. And as Jeremy alluded to, that was the big news this morning on the uh, basically pregame show with Annie Sakamoto and Tommy Marquez talking to Annie Thoris' daughter at check-in on Tuesday, or rather on Monday. She has a shoulder injury, Lauren Fisher does, so for her to be able to compete here, they haven't done a lot of team training over the last couple of weeks, and it was a question mark whether or not they would go with Lauren Fisher when they signed in. 
Pulling was a major issue, and Annie mentioned those pull-ups are going to be really tough on any pulling movement. As this is a pushing movement with the bob, this should be okay. We're about to find out now how much shoulder strength she actually has got, and taking a little bit of time to get to the bar. The hang should be the easiest part for her as long as she can protect it and probably not overextend at the bottom and get her feet too far behind her body. Young woman that made her game's debut all the way back in 2014 has certainly been around the block, podiumed on a team in 2019. Tanya, she looks good right now. She does, and she has the team uh, capacity. She has the history behind her of working on a team. I think that's why Annie recruited her to be a part of this team when Annie made the decision to uh, take her competition to the team side of things. Um, Lauren thought it was she was a, it was a joke. It was a DM through Instagram, and you know, but Lauren has the experience. It'll just be how well she holds up and how things, uh, how things feel for her. Absolutely, and we waited at registration for so long, waiting to see who would actually turn up for the Rocky Big team. They missed the registration time. They did, and yeah, a lot of media around, and then it was a bit of a, a downer when uh, when uh, Catherine was not up, up appearing, but Lauren back in, and they said she was pretty much good to go. Plenty of space in between. <laughs> Pairs, so pairs not having to stay together on the course. You can see the dampness, the moistness of the dirt, the gravel out there. Does that help or hinder these teams versus the teams that went in heat one on a dry course? You have to be more cautious on the wet course. A wipeout would be costly if you get hurt. And especially this first round, I expect everybody to take it a little bit slower just to kind of um, ID the course, see where the puddles are, and then make sure that they can safely run it. And then they'll know coming around if they can make it any faster. Here comes Con Porter. Reykjavik has one athlete back in, way out ahead of the field. If nothing else, it gives Porter a little bit of an opportunity to catch his breath. And here is Nicholas Hecht from OBA. He is an athlete I have known since he was younger. He started training at our box. He's a football athlete. He is strong on the bike. He was pumped to get out here his first games appearance. He was excited about the bike, but nervous about the course being wet and what that was going to do to other athletes in, on his team and all the athletes as well. And Annie Thor's daughter got back in off the bike. So Tola Morikeno and Lauren Fisher are now out on their bike. There is Thor's daughter and Con Porter just driving through this bob. You have to wonder with the moisture on the turf, does the bob not slide easier for these teams in Heat 2 than it did when it was dry in Heat 1? Even if the bob does slide easier, your feet slide easier than two. A lot of these athletes, we did speak with them. We talked to some of the teams while they were waiting for their hours, and they were concerned. They were looking to get different shoes for this reason. They want to make sure that they, their footing is solid, um, and that is in a factory. You see some people with grips and some of the turfs. Iceland also did make a TikTok during those couple of hours. They did. I spoke to uh, CrossFit Selwyn, CrossFit Yas in the background as well, and Michael Makaide from Yas actually said he's going to be working wearing cleats on the field just to make sure he's got a little bit more grip. I'm not sure what that does for him on the bike, yeah. but definitely more grip on the field. I haven't, I haven't biked in cleats in a while. A special thank you to Trek Bicycles for providing the bikes and the helmets, not necessarily the cleats, that the athletes are using today. Visit trekbikes.com to check out road, mountain, electric, or fitness bikes. That includes the bikes that these athletes are riding here in event one from Trek Bikes. Jorge Fernandez with the mustache coming in there from behind for Invictus. You can see hot on the heels of Iceland and the team from CrossFit Reykjavik. Andrea Nistler on the right there for Mayhem Freedom. She's working with Samuel Cornoyer. Cornoyer in the foreground of your screen, the newest athlete for this Mayhem Freedom team. Individual games athlete, two times in his career. Con Porter has been on the individual side for Reykjavik, obviously as has Annie Thor's daughter, two times a champion. A lot of talent, and it makes the team's competition so much more intriguing. It does. Khan Porter, I have not seen him in better shape in his entire CrossFit career, and it has really sparked him. I had a good chat to him yesterday, and he just said he is all guns blazing now. He's dropped a lot of body fat and looking very good. So he has ignited himself by going to train with the team because he said he actually kept him out of a little bit of trouble training so much, but he's very, very glad that he has Sundays off. Said is all he had to do. He couldn't get in trouble. He just exactly. woke up and trained. Much like these. 
Aussies do, these two athletes in mayhem. Sam Cornoyer coming down from Canada, Adrian Nistler coming down from Minnesota to begin training at Cookville, this and last year respectively, and they will now wait for the return of Taylor Williamson and Rich Froning Jr. One of the recipes I mentioned earlier is that timing and making sure the transitions are very smooth. The athletes coming off the total bar have got a lot of time to recover. We found in heat number one that the fatigue in the legs from the bot push really started to kick in in round two. So athletes making sure they get through the total bar as quick as they can and make sure they've got enough before they get on this bike leg. Jorge Fernandez in the front from Invictus, Tolomora Kenyo right behind him from Reykjavik. Right now, your overall leaders, the team from Iceland, the team from Mayhem, both went undefeated in their respective semifinals. A perfect six for six. CrossFit Omnia is in third. They are the champions out of the Atlas Games in the semifinal stage. And you can see Lauren Fisher and Tolomora Kenyo coming in together, so Reykjavik's in good positioning here. What will be the end of officially the first round for them? Each of these athletes having to complete each of the rotations three times. This event also being one of the longer events, it's really going to be important your pacing that you can keep your tempo up. So this first round, really feeling things out, just seeing what that what you feel like, and then making an adjustment after that. I expect a team like Mayhem here to actually pick up speed as they go. They, you start a little bit more cautious in an event that you know is this long. What I want you to watch, though, is they have shirts on Bob. It is really important. Mayhem knows of all the details, paying attention. They can wipe themselves off if it starts to rain or if it's spritzing out there. They have their shirts that they can dry things off. Really smart. Everyone always looks at how they can gain an advantage on CrossFit Mayhem Freedom. And then this event was announced, or at least pieces of it were announced. They said there would be biking for the first time ever in the team competition. And Rich Froning's account posted on Instagram, and we thank you. And the entire rest of the team division, I'm sure, sighed and said, oh, come on. Mayhem licking their chops trying to hunt down Reykjavik right now and Invictus in first place. That is the specifications of Bob, 667 pounds, as we told you in heat one, about the size of pushing around a vending machine. And this is something that Mayhem did get their hands on, a Bob-like element, not the exact replica, but one they have been training with, they train often in it, if there's an area that they feel is a weakness. A lot of times we look at these athletes and we think there's no we they don't have any weaknesses. It's just scalable, just like everybody back at, at home at your box. They still have things that they need to work on, and when you recognize that, you get to work doing it. They have, they've got themselves a Bob, they put the time in with it, um, they look like they're communicating really well when they need to take their pauses. Taylor Williamson looks like she's just going for a stroll on the bob. The last time they just went for that push then, the bob moved a fair bit. So there must be a bit of moisture on the turf at the moment, which is going to be moving the bob around. You mentioned that the feet are going to be slipping out a little bit more, Tanya. But these guys know what they have to do. They know the timing now because they've done the first round. So they're going to get to work straight away and rest at the back end of this 30 synchronized total bar. They're adaptable athletes, so a lot of times it's more of what we're saying or they're thinking about it, but once you get out there, you just adapt on the fly, make the adjustment. There's your leader right now, Jorge Fernandez in the front. That's Devin Kim in the background. Team from Invictus, again, the only affiliate that has had a team at the games. Every year there has been a team competition at the games. Devin Kim has been to the games as a teenager. Jorge Fernandez, though, in the foreground is kind of Invictus's secret weapon. He's 27 years old, former very good baseball pitcher at San Diego State University. And the coaches at Invictus kind of look at him as the dark horse, someone to keep an eye on if you're buying blue chip stock, eventually at the individual competition here in Madison. So roughly about three minutes for the gentleman, based upon what the individuals did earlier on today, and about three and a half minutes for the females on the average round of a mile. So Rich getting that round done and knowing exactly what he has to do and the timing spot on once again and making sure they've got adequate rest at the end of this round. Who patented the mouth guard half in, half out? Is it Steph Curry or is it Rich Froning?
again, you can see the moisture. Two hour rain delay because of both rain and also thunder and lightning in the area has really matted down the course, particularly on the dirt and gravel. That is not a paved course you're looking at. That is loose dirt, loose gravel. There is some puddling on it. Brittany Weiss from Invictus here coming back into the North Park. And that dismount was an area that caused some of the other athletes some trouble. It was Mayhem Independence that just had a tough handoff between Sasha Nieves and Alexis Johnson. <laughs> Oslo Navy Blue is in front, and Victus trying to come back on their heels here. With Fernandez and Kim now out on the run, that'll be Joshua Alshama and Brittany Weiss going to work here on the bob. Not far off pace. Eighth day CrossFit Black in 28.02 is your time to be. 28.10 from Oslo Purple Red is currently in second place. Nistler in fronting, Mayhem Freedom. Or excuse me, Nistler and Cornoye. Con Porter, Annie Thor's daughter, are the pair for Reykjavik. Con Porter, we know he's got a massive engine and he looks very strong. And actually, Annie waiting a little bit longer to get back on, and Con Porter ready to get to work. Tanya, break down the form for me a little bit. The way that Con Porter is attacking this, and now Annie Thor's daughter has changed up her positioning a little bit, but was very extended on that last push. She was. She was extending her arms, probably giving her legs a little bit more of a break using her upper body, but then quickly transitioned. And, and that sometimes you just need to make the adjustment because it's so much time under tension just to get a little bit of relief. It's Oslo Navy Blue now jumping into first place here. I love the confidence, Jeremy, of this team from CrossFit Oslo because they were second last season to Mayhem Freedom at the Games. Which, which is okay, which is not bad. And Leona Richter told us last year second was first. This year, no, 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 it's not who can come in second place behind Mayhem. She said last year second was first, this year first is first, and they're gunning for it from the get-go. I was so happy when she came out and said that the confidence in the team is absolutely exceptional, and the pacing as well. They're doing very well just to pace off this first couple of rounds, knowing the first heat of this event, the fatigue hit some of these teams a little bit harder than I think they expected. So no doubt these teams were watching that first heat and exactly know when to push and when to back off. Avon Dal Reingard is the male in the background. Ingrid Hodenmere, the female in the foreground for Oslo Navy Blue. And they are done with their 30 synchronized toes to bar. They will wait for Richter and Bill Adele to return from the bike ride. Probably the first time these athletes have actually done toe to bar in a bike helmet. I can't imagine there's another time. <laughs> Mayhem is done. Reykjavik is done. And again, everybody waiting for the return of the bikes here on these mile sprints. One mile course takes you through the campground, takes you through the dog park. Honestly, this morning when the individuals are riding bikes, you wake up and walk out of your camper. All of a sudden, you're in the middle of a CrossFit Games event. That was a smooth transition right there. And these teams are already looking better with their transitions, handing off the bikes, where to wait, which side of the bike to be receiving it from. We have 12 minutes until we get to the time to beat that 2802 established by eighth day. You can see the Freedom Tandem riding together off to the right. You don't have to ride together, you just have to go ride. And 
to their left is the Independence uh, team as well. Used to working out side by side, so I'm sure that helps when you're out there on the field, knowing where other people are, where you usually are against them. From some familiar territory there. Seems as though a lot of the teams are not struggling as much as the others in the bob push. Yeah. It might have a lot to do with the water that is on the top of the field. And we talked about, hey, the sled, the bob might slide easier, but your feet also might have less traction. I think there's probably, after seeing it, more truth to the bob sliding easier than their feet having less traction. Interesting setup with one foot flat, one foot on the, the toe, and swapping. We saw that in heat number one, and a good way to strategize your rest periods. You've only got a couple of seconds to walk across the bob and then get back to work again, so you're not wasting too much time if you're just backing off. Leander Richter does have to be careful, though, that bobsled, or the bob, rather, is coming very close to moving out of the lane for Oslo. But they have to stay close to the line, as you see there. Is, there's two bobs in each lane, so they can't take up that entire lane. So you're going to Titanic it, somebody. It is really important to keep your head up. You don't want your fingers on the outside, either. True story. <laughs> no, it happened to Jen Ryan in the semifinals for Invictus last year. She banged her hand on a, on a metal rail and wound up breaking it. Mayhem Independence has now overtaken Oslo Navy Blue in the lead. A lot of people talking about Mayhem Freedom, rightfully so. It's Rich Froning's team. They have been the dominant faction. But Independence is a team at these games for the second time ever. Entirely new roster. But if you're training in Cookville, you are a threat. Rich Froning synchronized toes to bar. 30 of them here with Taylor Williamson. I thought that was interesting. Rich wasn't even looking at Taylor. That's how in sync these two athletes are. Rich has been with a different team every year he's been to the games, but these ladies, he spoke about them at the MAC with me, it, and he, he has a strong pair of female athletes, and he said a lot of times the teams come down to your females, and he has trust in them, he has faith in them, and they have been working together so much that it becomes second nature, that they move the way you move, and you know how you're working together. But he's keeping his eyes out, seeing where everybody's at. They know their pacing and their tempo, and I'm not surprised that they were not leading from the beginning, um, just because you can kind of pick people off where you know when you're in control of your speed. A lot more control in this set of toe to bar from Rich. The communication through those eyes, didn't have to say a word, but they've been practicing this sort of stuff for a long time. So left of screen there was Reykjavik. Again, Lauren Fisher still looks to be just fine. Annie Thor's daughter quite open about her shoulder concerns coming into these CrossFit games. Oslo Navy Blue. Smooth transition. And Leona Richter will walk that bike out. She and Nicolette Villadell back outside. Coming up on 28.02 as the time to beat from opening heat one. Established by eighth day CrossFit. Joel, this seems to be in heat number two. There is a lot more times for these teams after the Toda Bar as in heat number one. Yeah. A little bit more pressure on those first teams and less water on the track. And speaking of tracks, there's a lot of tracks out on the, the one mile bike ride. The individuals did earlier on. I was surprised that there are so many tracks out on the back end of the course that they didn't follow the same track. Choose your own adventure there. Pro on Montreal, another team to be reckoned with here. Got a good look at Maud Riappel. Our top five team at the games a year ago. Seven minutes remain. When these athletes are done with the Bob Push and Toast to Bar, coordinated with the bike ride, they will then as a team reunite. One more Bob Push. And then they'll collapse at the finish line with the timer. Andrea Nistler on the right, driving here. And you can see how close they come on that pass. Those teams working in very tight quarters with two bobs per lane. 
Cornelier is trying to turn them back, and you can see the communication with Nistler. New experience for Samuel Cornelier, competing on a team for the first time at the CrossFit Games. They love him, though. He's got the infectious energy, right? If you're a team, Froning, Nistler, Williamson, you've been doing this for a long time. Taylor Williamson said it's kind of like having a puppy dog. You tell Samuel Cornelier something, and he's so excited, it brings the entire energy of the team up. It does. It, the team is not one person, but one person can make a big difference. And, I mean, that man right there makes a big difference. Whoever he brings with him <laughs> makes it on the podium. But for Sam to, to have that energy and to have that spark and that they can depend on him and his abilities is huge. Nine-time champion. Could this year be 10? And then the other interesting twist for Rich Froning. We'll play it out there here at event one. He has been asked questions this year. Could it not only be 10, but it, could it be final? And he's checking behind him for Taylor Williamson. And this is just it. It, it doesn't matter how well you are biking if your teammate isn't there with you. And he's not sure where she is at this moment. It's almost an unsettling feeling. It's like you don't want to disappoint him either. Sun coming out as well, which is going to dry things out, but I don't think there's going to be enough time in this time cap for it really to make an effect. Now again, think about this. The time to beat is 28.02. And there's Taylor Williamson coming up right behind Rich Froning. 28.02 is the time to beat. Like that number is going to be smashed here in Heat 2. The bob was definitely faster. It was. It, it just was. I mean, they were. They've been waiting from the beginning here. So Nisler and Cornelia are done. All they have to do here. Here comes Oslo Navy Blue in first. They'll get in ahead of Mayhem Freedom and run back to the bomb as a unit. So it's Oslo Navy Blue, not Mayhem, Independence, or Freedom. Hey, we said it already. Last year for Oslo, second was first. In 2022, first is first. It has been 1,800 days since Mayhem Freedom has trailed at the CrossFit Games. And one event in here in 2022, they are looking up on the leaderboard. That is incredible for Oslo Navy Blue. What a way for them to start. And now an absolute sprint. Here comes Mayhem, Rich Froning and company. It's early. Navy Blue, 24-34. Freedom in three seconds after then. Independence, two seconds after that. The trio that many think might wind up on the podium at the end of the weekend. It is a long weekend, but Oslo Navy Blue has made the early statement. Finish in lane 17 for Portee, the first Finnish team to come to the games. Invictus flying across now. They were your leader early. Omnia coming in behind them. I tell you what, it's going to be a real oh, it's exciting it's team competition. Crack up. Reykjavik not doing as well. They started off very well, but seemed to fall away at the end. Has that got anything to do with Lawrence Fatigue? We'll have to find out. But great for Mayhem. Both teams in that top three. I just want to put this in perspective. 1,800 days since Mayhem has looked up at somebody on the leaderboard in the team competition. That is a longer span of time than the entirety of the American Civil War and World War I. That is the rate of dominance that Rich Froning's team has just seen broken. It's going to be a long week, but they've got company here in 2022. But that's a lot of fuel for him and his team to come right back with independence right there as well. They're not going to back down. All of this. Going to fuel more. Tanya, all of this is still ahead of the time oh, to yes. beat from Heat 1. Everyone here will finish in the top half. Urban energy done. 
top 10 team at the games a season ago. Here's the Kiwis from Selwyn. And again, you have to imagine after pushing the bob with just pairs, once you put all four athletes on it, it becomes significantly lighter here at the very end of the event. Sarpsburg is done in 11. Twenty six fifty six unofficially overtake team density trying to fly in behind them team that qualified out of the syndicate crown in second place twenty seven unofficially twenty eight oh two is still the time to beat by eight day look at Leona Richter, Ingrid Hodenmere. You know all the talk for Oslo coming into this too? Remember back to Wadapalooza, January, teams of three. It was Hodenmere and Richter competing with, uh, competing against rather, the, the Mayfem team of Williamson and Nestler and Haley Adams. They had Kristen Holta on their side and they won. So they have the confidence coming into today that they can certainly do. And the speed that we saw them just attack this event, they definitely have that confidence. And they're here for it. They're, set, they're, they're setting down a statement now that this is, is what they're here for. All four of them are members of the national team. That is a thing that exists in Norway. It is a country very well dedicated to functional fitness and the sport of fitness and CrossFit. Everyone finishes event number one in both heats. And almost everyone here in heat two beat heat one. The big question from the get-go was gonna be how is Lauren Fisher gonna feel when she got up on those toes to bar? But the highlight of this whole event was really Oslo Navy Blue. They just blistered their toes to bar. They picked the speed and they didn't change from that speed the entire way through. They had really clean transitions on the bike. It was perfect. That's what got them up there and the Mayhem team did come back strong. I just don't think it was fast enough or good enough. And maybe the fuel in the fire from Oslo got them over the line because they are here to make a statement. <laughs> and they only needed three to bring it home, but nothing was going to stop them. Event win, that is a remarkable, amazing start from Oslo Navy Blue. Anytime you can pick up an event victory where you can just kind of casually push the bob while pumping your fist in the air, 24-34, that is a three-second win over Mayhem Freedom. Independence comes in third. Joel, four minutes to heat number one. That is just remarkable. I have, have to imagine the weather played a piece of it, but still, I mean, maybe if it's same weather conditions, a three or two and a half minute difference. Well, also, it's impressive. It, but you figure the mental fatigue, also the stress. Those athletes yeah. were up. They were ready. They walked out the long walk, too. So the, there's give and take on both sides of that. I wonder how he's feeling. Is he going to be cranky? He wants to get after it again. He won't have a white shirt on. Well, that's true. Stop the mayhem was the tagline for the Wasatch Brutes in 2017 when they upended Froning and company and they trail for the first time since finishing second in 2017 to this team that is with Jamie. All right, guys, I know we had a big rain delay. You guys had to wait in the athlete warm-up warm area. What were you guys doing to keep your mind mentally in it? What did we do? Um, Relaxed <laughs> and uh, just started fresh again with a warm-up. Great. More pants in on that. <laughs> okay, and Lena, you said that this event was fun. What was fun about this event? I said horrible fun, but yeah, it was fun. <laughs> um, it's just a longer event. You kind of zoom in or go into your own zone, and it was nice. Yeah. And between semifinals and now this first event, what have you guys been training? How much have you been incorporating biking into your training? 
Uh, we've been arguing on a regular basis because we're like four siblings, so we're always nagging and picking on each other. Besides that, we've had the one session on the bike that was at the parking lot in Sheboygan. And uh, Ingrid is riding her bike to, the, to uh, work every day, but uh, the other guys, we don't uh, do anything with the bicycle. Well, not bad. Congratulations. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Gonna make that a t-shirt. It all started at a parking lot in Sheboygan. <laughs> Event one winner at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Oslo Navy Blue is in first, and if it only lasts for one event, take a picture of that and sell it on postcards back in Norway. Team event number one in the books here at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. We're going to head inside for the rest of competition today. We will see you inside the Coliseum. In the meantime, for Jamie Higgia, Jeremy Austin, Tanya Wagner, the rest of our crew, my name is Joel Gadet. Full coverage at games.crossfit.com. Women event number three continues next.